Prayer is effective not because of great men who pray, but because of a great God who graciously hears his people. The greatness of the prayer is about the graciousness of God. So don't get carried away when one person talks about how his prayers were answered. Don't give too much of the credit to their efforts. It is about God who is answering these things. When I broke the world record, you can show the world map, please. You know, when I broke this world record, CNN came up and uh, they asked me, so how do you feel? How do you feel having traveled to every country in the world? I said, I don't feel anything. <laughs> this, what do you mean? I said, you see, I have not spent my money to travel. I did not have a salary. I was a Viva missionary. I live by faith. And I said, I did not toil and work hard for nine months, saved up money to travel the world. The visas that I've received are all miracles. 50% of my documents were not there for all my visas. <clears throat> it was a miracle after miracle. I still remember when I had gone to apply for my US visa. Then they said, I didn't even have a bank account by then. And without a bank statement, how can you even apply for a visa? Then they saw that I had a UK visa. They said, how did you get this visa? I said, they gave me. <laughs> no, that's it. There is no story behind that, you know. And you know, they didn't believe me. So they called the UK embassy to verify if I made this visa or if they really gave the visa. But that is the truth. My story is like that, that it does not fit into your syllabus. I speak for MBA students and they say, sir, what you're telling is not in our syllabus because faith is not there in MBA. But that is my journey. And I pray that you can have the same adventurous journey in Jesus Christ. And it is possible because Elijah was an ordinary human being. And he prayed that. Remember, it is the gracious God who hears our prayers. The greatness is about God. Yes, we put our efforts, but it is about Jesus. Remember one thing. Reciting repeated words is the reverse of fervent prayer. No, reciting repeated words. Use your mind and your heart when you pray. Not just your heart. Use your mind and your heart. That, that's, that is important. See, Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Use your mind also. That's when you know, like we run the apologetics DTS in Bangalore, a discipleship training course to equip people in the marketplace. There was this girl who wants to become a police officer. One day I asked her to pray for lunch and she started off, God, we are sinners. We don't deserve to live in this world and all these things. I told, I asked you to pray for lunch. I did not ask for a repentance prayer. You know, we have this habit of just doing things and sometimes we mix up with the titles, Father, Jesus. Jesus is the son of God, he's not the father. But you know, God is so gracious that he still listens to all our things. But let us not have this whole repeated form of praying. That is not fervent prayer, okay? But praying over and over again as if it is a spell that will force God to answer against his will. We think that, you know, we just keep on praying, praying, praying. That is not fervent prayer. The definition of fervent in Cambridge English Dictionary is displaying a passionate intensity, burning or glowing. To put it simply, to do something fiercely means to do it with a great deal of enthusiasm. That is what prayer is. That is where, you know, you, you are passionate. It is fierce. And it's like, you know, when, when, when I was in North Korea, I was invited by the government of North Korea, and they gave me a one-way ticket. That itself is a red flag, but I still went. <laughs> and, and, and so the entire trip was taken care of by the government. They said, you come and we'll give you your return ticket. <clears throat> I went there, I finished my contract with the government for seven days of my performances for their 100th birth anniversary of their founder, Kim Il-sung. And after seven days, I'm asking for my return ticket. They said, can you please stay for five more days? I said, no, I'm already, I want to go home. I really want to go home. And, and I'm stuck because there's no tickets available anywhere. It's not like anywhere else in the world. And what do you do? The only thing you can do is pray. You have no phone, you have nothing, you have nobody. You have only the spies and Jesus, this, that's it. These are the only two people available for you there. And you fiercely pray. 
you fervently pray you earnestly pray it is not a prayer that you lie down and say god do something no you would put your entire energy into that when you are praying and i prayed and i prayed and next day morning they brought the ticket you know that is what fervent prayer is and i don't know what kind of prayer you are praying for every prayer is not just always around money i have friends who are millionaires they are praying for a one night sleep that's it without medication that's all they praying is i just want to sleep by 10 and wake up at 6 that is their prayer people in high places of influence don't have a family together their prayer is that i want to have a loving family it's not always about job it's not always about money there are different ways that we pray so remember that's see fervent prayer is a prayer is is praying according to what moves you and what moves you is according to what you know moves god's heart and that's why it is important to find the will of god in our prayers so important to find the will of god not the bmw jeep and kia and all those things that is your will but what is god's will for your life that's why it is so important that we should align our desires to his desires when his desires become our desires then you know that he will surely fulfill the desires of your heart whether it's to do with marriage whether it's to do with job whether it's to do with moving to another place whatever it is seek for his will and he will never disappoint you and i stand as a testament 16 years ago i was at the verge of committing suicide having lost everything in life lost my identity in my family lost my health i had 6 months to live failed in my high school thrown out of school i was the shame of my family i had nothing to look for and i had an encounter with jesus and i'll tell you till today i'm going to be 48 on the 6th of august and i have no regrets for asking jesus to come to my life i have no regrets and all that he had all that he had was good plans yes i went through ups and downs you know at the end of the service you can get a copy of my book called unthinkable and you will see the ups and downs but when i look at the big picture all things work together for good not just some things in the big picture today i stand as a testimony and you can stand as a testimony too to moving forward the word earnestly comes from the greek word uh, energome which means energetic just the word earnestly itself means energetic so when you pray you put everything into that you put everything into that prayer it is not just sitting down yes god is everywhere but do your part you know it is like it is it is like an embroidery pattern it's in rot with the spirit it's an embroidery pattern where it is your physical your 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 strength that you are putting forth and the holy spirit together you pray and you will see amazing amazing things that would happen and that is how you know i could travel to every country in the world all those lines is only through prayer i prayed crazy crazy prayers like when saudi arabia they were going to cut my hair off because those days it was against the law for a man to have long hair and i prayed a very simple prayer i said god you you are a master in opening blind eyes which means you also have the power to close the open eyes so i prayed that god would blind all the officials so that my hair and my guitar will not be visible and it happened early days of my ministry i did not have much money i had someone gave me a shoe which was smaller in length i prayed to jesus it was a green color nike shoes made in indonesia i'll never forget in 1998 it was small in size so i knelt down and i prayed i earnestly prayed that god will increase the length of the shoe and he increased it and i used it for 2 years i am an ordinary human being i am not from some other place and god can do that when my visa from libya which was all in arabic <coughs> i'm sitting in the plane and they said uh, i asked the guy what does my visa say and he said 
under the profession it says you are an engineer now i don't look like an engineer engineers don't carry a guitar and you know <laughs> there's nothing and if the officer asked me what are you doing as an engineer in libya i don't want to tell lies it is wrong as a christian to tell lies and i know i am i'm the most attractive guy to the immigration every time any country i go they would always when they look at my passport you know this is always an attraction for them and and i prayed this prayer i said god i don't want to tell lies please mute the officer so that he will not ask me any questions and i don't have to tell any lies that was my earnest prayer and god answered it this is the only country where the immigration guy did not speak a word didn't even wish me he didn't even wish me and i am an ordinary guy i am a sinner saved by grace if jesus could do that with me i really believe that you can have stories of elijah i just want to close with two stories about this and um, both of them are from my book i don't know how are we doing with time pastor anyways no need to ask also <laughs> it's the first day love covers a multitude of <laughs> mistakes okay two things first thing why elijah's prayers worked is because elijah learned to wholly rely on god he had no plan b he did not have a plan c he wholly relied on god when we pray can we really rely on god as my only source and my only resource in this world blessed with so many options it is difficult to rely on god but elijah's prayer worked because he wholly relied on god from first king 17:5 and 6 it says you know that so elijah did as the lord told him and camped beside kiriat brook east of the jordan the ravens brought him bread and meat each morning and evening and he drank from the brook that's the last bird i would have expected to bring food but god did it for him it was the only way he could survive was god sending food to him now when i look at my last journey that was to pakistan where before i broke the world record it was extremely difficult because for india and pakistan we love each other so much that it's just literally impossible to get into each other's country and it was my last country imagine now i'm an expert traveler the embassy said the ambassador said don't even come your visa is rejected the only way you can get is if you have a blood relative or if the government of pakistan invites you now i have zero blood relative because i am a south indian now i can't even reach the indian government where will i reach the pakistani government there is no way literally there is no hope i made 334 phone calls in 4 days and every single phone call was rejected they said no i have tried but then i went back to jesus and i said jesus you told me in 2001 that you'll take me to every country by 2010 i've reached 2010 i have one country left but it's impossible and god says benny trust me no god works even at the point of knife and the neck i remember when abram took that knife to sacrifice his son you know how much of time is there between he needs to really prepare to just with one stab he has to finish him off it would take so much even god worked between the knife and the neck hold on have patience time spent waiting on god is never wasted hold on to him wait wait patiently and here god did a miracle this is the hotel called yangakto on the right hand side a 43 story hotel and i met this delegation the pakistani delegation at the 32nd floor of the hotel they were i was coming out of the uh, lift and they were going into the lift and long you can read the story uh, but when we talked they said they were from the uh, government of pakistan and nisar ahmed kuro was the speaker of the parliament he said don't worry 
I will handle your visa. He calls up the ambassador, says, Benny is my friend, give him the visa. The ambassador calls me and he says, come to the embassy in five minutes, I will issue your visa. Now, only God could do that. Only God can do that. I don't know what kind of breakthrough you're looking for, but I'll tell you, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And my last story is Elijah daringly prayed for God-sized miracles. He was not ashamed of praying for God-sized miracles. He never downsized God's power based on his limitations. You see, when you travel in the plane, when these small TVs are there in front of you, they'll say, this movie has been resized to fit to that. And many times we resize God based on our understanding and based on our limitations. But let God be God. No, let him do his own way. That's why my life is adventurous because I've experienced him in the most amazing way. And 1 Kings 17, 21 to 22, you will see of how this boy was dead and Elijah spread himself on him and he prayed earnestly. He prayed that God will bring life back into a dead boy's body. And God did that. And here... This was the story about Somalia. And no, none of my friends had contacts in this place. I was in uh, Germany performing at the FIFA World Cup in 2006. During the week I was performing, weekends I was uh, going to churches one day in Hanover. I was preaching and I was telling them, you know, I, I love Jesus. I'm willing to live for him. I'm willing to die for him. I told them my stories of how I went to all these dangerous places, very close to being beheaded a couple of times. And I said, I'm, I'm ready to die for Jesus. It was all nice. At the end of the service, this family comes to me and says, Oh, brother, that was wonderful what you preached. Have you been to Somalia? I said, no, I've not been. They said, it will be nice if you can go there. I said, yes, I would love to go there. They said, we are from Somalia, but we can't go back there because we will be killed. Since you're ready to die, it will be nice if you can carry the gospel to Somalia. Now, I can't tell her, please don't take my sermon literally. No. So I said, okay, I'm ready. So they, she connected me. Her father was a doctor, and everything was good in our communication. I went to London to get my visa, because we didn't have that in India. Bought my tickets, informed my mom and dad, I'm going to Somalia, these are my dates. If I don't come back at this time, then I will see you in heaven. You know, when you're ready to die, you have nothing to lose. And, and here, it is not an accidental death, he knows everything. So I was not this fatalistic or believing in karma and all those things. I know he has numbered my days. So I'm, I'm just there. Everything was set. I wrote to him and suddenly a week before I'm supposed to take off, he writes to me saying, Benny, five Christians' heads have been beheaded. Please don't come. It's very dangerous. I wrote to him saying, I'm sorry for what I've heard about this, but I've already told my mom and dad, so I'm ready to come because I'm ready to die. He said, you might be ready to die, but I am not ready to die. Please don't come. I was like, now what do I do? So I said, I've already bought my tickets. Then he writes back saying, we have decided to move to another city. We, we are sorry, we will not be there to receive you. Now, the easiest thing and the wisest thing from a human mind is to cancel the ticket. That's, that's very simple, logical thing. But you know, you want to be a person who will fervently pray. You will pray for the will of God. Even in the midst of disaster, you will ask for God's will. So I say, God, everything is closed now. What do you want me to do? He says, Benny, go ahead with your plans. I will make a way. Now, this is Somalia. America, Dubai, there's so many ways that you can get in, but not in this place. And I trusted God. And I'm sitting in the plane. This airline is called Dalo. 
the aircraft is in such bad condition, you know that this is the last journey of the aircraft. Because one wing they have tied a rope, another wing they have put duct tape and you know, this is not going to really make it to that. And we took off and after an hour, the plane started to go down. I know something is wrong, so I called the steward and I said, the plane is going down and he says, yes, it is going down. I said, why? He said, we have some empty seats and we want to pick up some passengers on the way. And that's when I knew that this is really called the Airbus because it can stop anywhere. <clears throat> it stopped on a field called Galkayo. Two guys with AK-47 rifles escorted few passengers. Everyone got in, we took off. Everybody felt normal except me because this was not common for me. And then the steward looked at my guitar with all the flag patches and he said, have you been to all these countries? I said, yes. He said, where are you going? I said, I don't know. Uh, whom are you meeting? I don't know. Where are you going to stay? I don't know. What will you be doing in Somaliland? I said, I don't know. He said, you're going to one of the most dangerous places and you have no clue. I said, you're right. He said, okay, play a song. Mid-air, I took out my guitar and I played a song. When I finished playing, he says, wow, you are amazing. Would you like to meet my friend, Abdullah, who is the head of the media? I said, I would love to meet him. In fact, at this point, I'm ready to meet anyone, even a terrorist <laughs> or a pirate also I would meet because I have no connections there. And he calls up Abdullah Midair. There's no safety, nothing in this place. And uh, Abdullah says, tell him to be there. I'm sending my driver. As soon as the plane landed, when I got off the plane, the driver was waiting right in front of the door. He takes me and he escorts me to the hotel. You can show the picture, please. This is the last picture. And so, uh, you know, Abdullah is the one with the red striped shirts, and this is Bill from the United Nations. So I came down to meet them. I played a song, and Bill says, Betty, tomorrow is going to be a very special event. The elite of Somalia is going to come together and the locals have put a special show for them. It will be great if you can represent the international community and perform tomorrow. I said, I would love to, but unfortunately there's no flights day after tomorrow, so I have to take the flight tomorrow. And Abdullah says, well, why don't you go day after tomorrow? I said, there's no flights. He said, oh, that's not a problem. We can fix a plane for you. <laughs> now, I thought this is the biggest scam, no? <laughs> Fixing coffee, fixing tea, that is possible. But fixing a plane, not in my dictionary, actually. And uh, so he said, what time do you have to be in Djibouti? I said, day after tomorrow by five, I have to be there because six o'clock is when my concert starts. He takes his phone and he does some phone call and he says, cancel tomorrow's flight and book it day after tomorrow. It was so shady. I couldn't believe it. So I looked at Bill and I said, Bill, at least you will tell me the truth. Please tell me if this guy is telling the right thing. Bill smiles and says, Benny, Abdullah's family owns the airlines. They can cancel the plane whenever they want. They can fix the plane whenever they want. And that's what happened. They changed the entire schedule so that the next day I was able to open up this very unique event, share my testimony in such a close nation. And the following day I was able to take off and reach Djibouti by five so that I could perform. Now, this is only Jesus who could do that. It is all centered in prayer. It is not because I am some great guy or nothing. I'm a very ordinary guy. I'm just an ordinary guy, honestly. Not a humble statement. This is the truth. I have my own challenges. But if God could do that, I really believe that each one of you will have this treasure of fervent prayers of what God has done with your family, with your life, with your job, with your situation. And I pray that this will strengthen your journey in, in displaying Jesus. And that's when people will look up to you, like, just like this girl with hijab comes and says, now I want to meet you. We are from two different faith backgrounds. But what Jesus has done in my life has attracted her to come and ask questions and the same thing with your life, with the way you live, the way you talk, as though Jesus is your best friend, who is really, he is your best friend. And they should come and ask you and you will become a mighty testimony in this nation and the nations that he would take you to. 
Before I close in prayer, I will play a song on the pan flute. This is the instrument that I played at the Paralympic Games in London in 2012. And uh, at the time, I only had 40% lungs. And Jesus said, I will give you strength. I said, heal my lungs, God. He said, no, I will give you strength. And uh, in one week, I learned how to play this instrument. And at that time, only 40% lungs. And Jesus said, I'll give you the strength. And he said, if I can use five loaves of bread and two fish to feed 5,000, don't you think I can also use 40% lungs to play the pan flute? And uh, I said, God, from today onwards, I'll stop giving you ideas how to do a miracle. <laughs> Have your own way. And he did that. And this is one of the songs. Enjoy the song called Above All. You will see the excerpts from the Passion of Christ. And remember, pray fervently. You will have amazing testimonies for the world to see Jesus in and through your life.
Pray, please. Thank you. Loving Father, I want to thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for your love for us. You loved us so much, even though we did not deserve that you were willing to die on the cross and rise again on the third day, all for the sake of love. And today, by believing in you, it's not just our sins have been washed away, but you have made us righteous and you've given us eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege that we can talk to you. We can pray. We can fervently pray. I pray that you'd strengthen us. I especially pray for those who are seeking for a breakthrough. Those probably at the verge of giving up prayer because they seem nothing is working. Lord, I pray that you would do something supernatural as they fervently pray, as they earnestly pray. And they will bear testimonies that the world would draw close to them and ask them, what is the secret of your journey? They could always say that it is relying on Jesus. Thank you for this beautiful church, for this beautiful facility. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you.